So a friend of mine's a U.S. Navy vet, and his daughter just got accepted in the Navy. And I wanted to make something to commemorate this proud moment in their lives. And um, so I started to research the U.S. Navy to find something that'd make a good cutting board design. Um, and I learned, or Miss Rizzi, I'm sorry, I guess I relearned that the U.S. Navy was actually founded before we were declared a nation. Our proud United States Navy was founded October 13th, 1775, and the U.S. was founded, of course, July 4th, 1776. Um, so that kind of concludes our history lesson for the day. Um, so I knew that we had a Navy before we were the United States of America, but I never stopped to think that our U.S. Navy is actually older than the country it was founded to protect. So I thought that that was perfect. Um, 1775, it was something simplistic for my first ingrained cutting board and something that was symbolically relevant to this special event. So you've been watching the, the rough milling and uh, I figured that kind of went without any explanation. So my planner has been kind of difficult to uh, feed lately. In between projects, I did go ahead and wax all my cast iron surface, and it's made a big difference. Next, after milling the boards to their rough thickness, I. Uh, went ahead and took them to the table saw and cut them to the same uh, approximate dimension in width. Back to the planer, I ran two sides of the walnut and maple through with a quarter turn in between. Then I raised the bed slightly and made a pass over the other two faces. This gave me as close to a perfect square as I could get um, and making them ready uh, for cutting to their rough final height. Mm, side note, I didn't know a way to create the numbers without individually cutting and gluing them all together, and this led to a complicated glue up and some misalignments. Uh, if I'm honest, I'm not really satisfied with the end alignment uh, in the piece, and I was hoping that I had taken enough precautions that it would have been better than it was. Um, so if anyone knows a better way to do this or can think of a, an order of operations that would take out some of that inconsistency and in, in make for an easier final glue up, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your ideas and I'm, I'm sure we could come up with a, a better solution. So some of you will probably instantly see what I've done wrong here. And I did some slow-mo to kind of illustrate it better. Having your cutoffs trapped against something else, I know is a big no-no on the table saw. And it's also technically a no-no when you're working with um, any tool. <laughs> but uh, you can see here that uh, one of the cutoffs got trapped between the blade and this 2x4 that I'm using as a stop. And uh, it shot out the front. Um, luckily, it shot out into a um, scrap bin. But uh, I could have set up this stop block every time um, and then removed it before making the cut, but I figured it was easier just to put a little painter's tape, refreshing it every so many cuts, um, and it holds all those pieces together and prevents any one piece from jiggling and then getting cocked and, and locked into that blade. Um, I think I ended up with 80-some-odd walnut uh, squares and 38 or so maple cubes um, to make this design and uh, there you can see the 1775 for the, the first time and I sanded all eight 
corners um, or ends of these cubes just to prevent any interference from any chip out. Now I put down some wax paper. I'm using the, the Festool uh, MFT table there as a backstop and then a planed 2x4 on the other as a side stop. I had what's known as uh, zoom creep or lens creep uh, when the camera's pointed at a steep angle. Sometimes this happens. So enjoy the uh, shot of my sacrificial back. Um, but you can kind of see the way you glue it together piece by piece. I'm really kind of disappointed in the way this turned out. I, I was look, looking forward to the pattern taking place kind of stop motion style with this fast forward. Um, so I'll do a better job next time, guys. Now I'm going to go through and scrape off all the excess glue, use a flush trim saw, and uh, cut the uh, some of the bigger chunks off. And then I'm only gonna show you a couple of these because it's pretty much the same thing. With it being ingrained, this took forever. I started with 40 grit to get a good level surface, then 60, then 80, then 100, 110, so on and so forth. Um, I went all the way up to 320 on this piece eventually. Here I'm just gonna square up the edges. Like I said, I, I didn't have perfect alignment, all those pieces. That's a, a lot of time for that glue to, to sit edge to edge um, and, and dry before I was ready to put a final clamping on it. My next video is going to be another ingrain cutting board. Um, I have it all recorded, I just need to get it edited and posted. I know it's another ingrain cutting board, but it's Christmas, so give me a break. I'm making Christmas presents here. Um, it is going to be larger and constructed in a more traditional manner where you make a large kind of uh, glue up and then cut it and then turn it and glue that back up. But uh, I screw it up more than once, so <laughs> if anything, just watch it and you can have a good laugh at my expense. Now it's time for just a, a quick 1 8 inch round over. I did this on both the top and the bottom. I'm just kind of showing you the bottom here, I guess, because why not? <laughs> it's the same operation both ways. I don't care how sharp your blade is or how light of a pass you're taking. My router bits always give me a little bit of burn and um, they never leave quite a perfect round over. So I like to come over um, just by hand with a, uh, a sanding 
or a, a hand sanding. You can eliminate the burn and uh, go ahead and feather that edge out a little more and get a, a more pleasing round over. And I'm going to clean this surface with a little uh, mineral spirits just to make sure everything's got all my oils off my hands and any residues and, and dust and dirt off of this before I put any butcher block oil on it. I'm going to try submerging this piece because it's uh, actually fits inside one of our pans pretty easily and uh, mineral oil is, is food safe. After I tested that it fit in the pan it was time to go ahead and put the mark on it I don't know about you guys. This this is just a very satisfying thing for me. Um, heating up the iron or the brand, and uh, the smell of the smoke as it uh, you know, makes its mark on your project. And you can see I have a scrap piece of pine in the back where I'm, I'm testing to make sure that I've got a, a hot enough iron to, to make the mark. You can see here I'm just coating it liberally and for the next couple of hours I'm actually going to be kind of turning this over and, and reapplying. This walnut here is, is incredibly thirsty. You'll, you'll see in the next project as well, I think I got a pretty good shot where um, I just let it soak in after applying it really thick. And I was surprised with, without it being fast time, I could see it just soaking in even after the second or third um, kind of application with, with a towel. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply a, a couple of rubber feet on the bottom of this. So I just picked something that looked about right as an inset, marked it on all four corners, and that'll be my center for the feet. <clears throat> and I did the first two freehand, and I don't know, I, I felt I like my training wheels, <laughs> so I marked my my uh, uh, distance on the bit, and then I used the the blue painter's tape here to uh, to make a flag. And once it starts moving the uh, shavings out of the way, then I know that I've I've reached my depth. So it's just a a really easy trick that my grandpa taught me and. You never end up deep, going too deep with it. And so with a, you really don't need uh, the super glue with, with these feet. They have uh, a friction fit um, and it, it's kind of hard to pull them out once you seat them, but I'm, I'm just a belt and suspenders kind of guy. And then what I did just to make sure all these ended up setting evenly is uh, I turned it over on, on the workbench and uh, put a couple of heavy items on top of it and that just makes sure it sets up nice. 
So here it is on top of the walnut table that I made uh, earlier this year and uh, some of my wife's decorations. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and thanks for watching.